Today in the U.S., many issues are addressed and discussed upon, but the issue of the cost of education has been tossed around a lot. Instead of only looking at the issue of the cost of education and how students are affected, a bigger issue needs to be focused on. This being the cost of education versus the cost of living. Not only this, but actions need to be taken. Over the years, students have been struggling with education costs both during and after they get out of college. This puts an unnecessary stress on students and can affect their academic work and also affect the students around them. Because of the payments that students end up having to pay back, lots of students end up dropping out of college to avoid the costs. On average, about 3 million students attend colleges in the United States. However, about 40% of college students end up not getting a degree and around 35% end up dropping out of college. About 35% of college students' dropouts occur because of financial struggles and about 70% of the total college dropouts drop out because they struggle to balance school, family, and an outside job to pay for it all. Another losing battle that higher education students are struggling with today is the high cost of living in the United States. The problem with the current cost of living is that education prices only go down slightly as living costs keep rising up. This results in students having more costs to pay up front, leaving them with less money and being saved up for the payments they have to make up for their education costs. The crisis is real. I just don't think it's a fatal crisis. I think that it's a survivable crisis for higher education if the colleges take it seriously. I do think colleges have become a little bit more cost conscious. They're actually recognizing that students and families can't afford to pay the rising prices that they're uh, charging and they're trying to find ways to control costs. I think there's a lot more discussion now and even some action on collaborations between universities and that's promising uh, development. Another result of the rising cost of living is that the students borrowing money to pay for tuition are having to pay back loans. It is expensive to live on campus or to be in an apartment. Unfortunately, many students end up in debt or owing thousands of dollars to the school or bank because they can't pay for everything. Money, money, money. Besides having to pay for tuition and books and dorms and all of that, what are you going to eat every day? You have to pay for your own food and transportation, which includes gas money if you drive. There are many other things you have to look at and it all adds up in the end. It's just more and more money coming up out of your pocket. The truth of the fact is that no matter the age, students who attend or attended a college struggle financially when having to pay on their own. The debts of students can affect their everyday personal lives and even their marriages. When a person gets married, their debts are shared with their spouse throughout some states. These debts should not be the problems or the worries of someone else, and it should not be their responsibility for them when they do not even take the courses. Not only that, these debts are stressful after college and also can be overly stressful to students while they're taking college courses. This can lead to poor grades and less focus on academic work resulting in yet another dropout because they do not do well in terms of being able to focus on school. The U.S. board fees at U.S. universities can range from about $8,000 to around $10,000 and that's only for the room and board fees. Think about the annual budget and on top of that the tuition fees and other fees that are having to be included. In an article that talks about how colleges set their tuition fees, Kent Barnes the Vice President of Enrollment at Augustana College in Rock Island, Illinois, says, We're no longer budgeting to what we think we need. We're far more sensitive to a family's ability to pay, he said. That may seem like news to many struggling to pay college bills or pay back college loans, yet for the small sample, non-random sample, of Augustana College, Barnes said the actual out-of-pocket cost to students has been going down year over year or holding steady, in contrast with the increase in the tuition and overall cost of living. It is because of this that the people higher in power believe that the cost of education is not a bigger issue anymore, when in fact the cost of education added to the cost of living has not really changed. By lowering the cost of education in relation to the cost of living, colleges are noticeably trying to make an effort to aid students with their finances. However, what colleges are not realizing is that students are still suffering from the cost of their education.
In terms of the cost of college tuition, uh, here's a chart showing it uh, in comparison to overall uh, inflation rates. The uh, black line on the bottom, uh, inflation weight rates uh, since 1985. And here the red line uh, going all the way up, uh, the cost of a college education. You saw in the uh, clip, you saw the college tuition fees versus overall inflation rates. It showed you how steep the prices have risen. So what can we do about it? Universities and other colleges with dorms should thrive with students living in them. Without cost-efficient living places, colleges will not be the same. We need to take action and make cost of living more affordable for higher education students. Students have enough on their backs, so why add more? To reinstate the cause, this is to benefit the next generation of the working class and employers who care about the type of workers they are hiring. We are addressing to the future president that the need for lowering cost of fees for students who can't afford the full education is crucial for higher education students. Also, living plans should be included so that students have less of a struggle outside of school in terms of self-support.